G'day you play legends and welcome back to another vlog. On today's video, I wanna take you through a hands-on review of the Tamron 17 to 70 mil and explain to you why this lens has completely changed my photography gear. I have built my photography gear around this beautiful lens. And today I wanna to go through all the reasons, the image quality, the build quality, the versatility, the durability, the price, everything you need to know, because this for me is one lens that Fujifilm users must look into. Thank you for joining me. I'm super pumped to bring you this video today because I reckon this lens right here, the Tamron 17 to 70 mil, will be very good solution for a lot of you Fujifilm users out there. And that's what today's video is all about. I've used this for the last month or about six weeks in videography, photography, and night photography. And I wanna take you through the pros and cons, especially in comparison to its probably biggest rival, the Fujifilm 1680 F4. A lot of you guys might be looking into that lens or own that lens already, and this may have interest you. So today, I'm gonna to cover all that as a personal aspect for a landscape and travel photographer and someone that dabbles in night photography. I think the first thing we're gonna talk about is the build quality. The build quality of the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeters is not bad. That's a really poor description of a build quality of a lens. And the reason I describe it that way is because we're comparing it directly to Fujifilm Ecosystem, one of the best lens lineups probably in all manufacturers, the build quality, ergonomics is supreme out of the Fujifilm ecosystem. The Tamron 17 to 70 millimeters is an F2 lens, making it relatively large in comparison to the 16 to 80 mil. It's a plastic body, which keeps the weight down being a relatively large lens, but unfortunately it hasn't got a weather sealing option on the Tamron, which may be a bit of an issue to some guys out there. And it is a little bit to me because I want to use and abuse this lens so much outdoors in Iceland, Slovenia, in crazy conditions, in snow, heat, dust, whatever it may be. So we'll see how the longevity of that lens goes. But that is a very hard question to answer right now. Now, one of the biggest problems a lot of Fujifilm users will say about this specific lens is there's no aperture ring on the body of the lens. For me, this isn't a real big issue because this is a more video centric lens for me in my YouTube channel. So I wanna keep on that f2.8, but I see some people's points. It can become a little bit of an issue. And that's where I think we move on to the video quality out of this lens. The video quality out of the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeters is like many other lenses out there in the market today, supreme. For someone that shoots mainly YouTube content, it's very hard to find a lens that wouldn't be good for my sort of videography skills. But one thing I have to note about this Tamron 17 to 70 millimeters is the autofocus. Coming from the 16 to 80, which shot most of my YouTube stuff, the autofocus was good. That's coming from a Fujifilm user where autofocus is a little bit hit and miss anyway. But I shot on this yesterday using eye detection and it didn't miss a beat, which is very weird because when I shot with back button focusing, manual focusing, it did miss probably 25% in comparison to the 16 to 80. So I don't know what it is, maybe it's me, but for what I use it for, it doesn't bother me at all. If you're using autofocus heavily, it is a downgrade from the 16 to 80 which may not have great autofocus anyway. As I said, I'm not a huge user, it's just what I'm getting from my user experience in comparison to 16 to 80. Then going on to filming my night photography videos, I've definitely noticed a big difference in autofocus when shooting the Tamron compared to the 16 1.4, which hasn't got a good reputation for autofocus anyway. So obviously, low light, it's accepted, but that's just something to note also. For me, it's not an issue at all, but for some people, it may be. Now let's move on to the image quality. Getting onto the photography side of things, what we're gonna do is choose three locations to shoot at 17 mil, 35 mil, and that 70 millimeter focal range, so you guys can download and visually see them at 100% to see exactly what I am talking about. For me, image quality isn't everything. I can get away with the softer image if the quality of the lens is good enough and versatile for me, that is what is a priority for me. But now, I'm gonna go through at 17 mil and shoot it at 2.8, f4, 5.6, f8, 10, f13, and f16 for you guys to download. And then just chuck it at 160 ISO as a constant for all these images at 17, 35, and 70 mil. And then just chuck my ISO, uh, sorry, my shutter speed to automatic and let the camera do all the work, basically. So I just go through and compose and always focusing on the church itself here and capture those images to see exactly what the focal range we are playing with and to see what sharpest we are playing with at the aperture. So let's go through and do that now. So we'll go through and do the same once again, 35 millimeters. We're using that f2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 
10, 13, 16 to catch those images. Now we'll move on to the telephoto side of things at 70 millimeters, see how good this lens is in that range. And for the telephoto, we'll go through and do exactly the same thing. I've got a beautiful scene here in front of me, a canola field in the first paddock and in the back paddock, I'm not sure if it's wheat or barley, this old ruins here. So I'm gonna go through at 70 millimeters, so right on the extreme, f2.8, f4, 5.6, f8, f10, f13, f16, I'm gonna go through and shoot. And once again, at the bottom of this, in the description, you'll be able to download all these images, so don't worry. I'm really keen to see how it's gonna go at 70 mil, because I've heard a bit of a, how you're going with it. So let's get these images in camera and see how we go. The last part of the image quote I wanna go through and look at is the minimum focusing distance, because it is 19 centimeters. That is absolutely crazy. So I'm gonna go through at 17, 24, 35, 50, and 70 mil once again, and photograph that as close as I possibly can to these beautiful, purple flowers. I'm gonna be shooting F4 and around 3200 ISO just give me a real fast shutter speed because it is a little bit windy here and it is moving that. So that is a crazy close minimum focusing distance, but it's one of the cool aspects about this lens also. Before we get onto my final verdict about the Tamron 1770 millimeters, I wanna be open and honest with you guys. This is not sponsorship. I paid this entirely with my own money. Everything coming out of my crazy mouth right now is what I've learned over the last four to six weeks using this lens. The lens itself comes in at 525 grams. It feels amazing on the front of the XT system. It doesn't feel front heavy, and the weight is kept down by obviously the plastic housing around the lens. The lens is a constant f2.8, which is ideal for many photographers and videographers out there, which was a huge draw card for me personally. Unfortunately, that weather ceiling is not in play. The lens is 120 millimeters long. It's the longest lens out of all the other mid-range zooms in the Fujifilm ecosystem, 16 to 80 and 16 to 55. And the 67 mil front filter element, which is a constant throughout any Tamron. Now, let's get on to why I love this lens so much and how it has completely changed my photography bag. So my final verdict, and would I recommend the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter for your Fujifilm system out there? The best way I can describe this is a very weird way. This lens is great at nothing, but it is good at absolutely everything. Let me explain. The photography, its comparison is a 16 to 55 f2.8. It's got a little bit more focal range on the long end, same constant aperture f2.8, but it is nowhere near as sharp as that lens. That lens is a bag of prime and it is ridiculously sharp, but this, has in-body image stabilizer, which for me is also an important, important aspect because that goes onto the videography side of it. I can handheld and capture that video. Then that directly correlates to the 16 to 80 millimeter. That is a constant F4. I would always take a constant F2.8. Now, yes, the 16 to 80 has a little bit wider, which I love that 16 mil, but it also has 10 millimeters extra. I don't care. That 2.8 is the biggest and most important thing for me because moving forward in that aspect, I can shoot night photography. And I highly recommend you go up here and watch this night photography about this lens because that is the third thing. It can shoot in low light, photography and videography. That is very, very important to me. I shoot low light filming for my vlogs. I shoot low light photography as a backup solution on trips like Iceland, I can photograph Northern Lights in a panoramic. That is absolutely ideal. It is good at everything. It is great at nothing. I'm happy to take the reduction in image quality. I'm happy to lose a little bit of focal range, but I'm happy to get all those lenses put in one. If this had weather sealing, it would be absolutely ideal. At $1,200, I can highly, highly recommend this lens if you are like me. Like to do a bit of everything, the photography, videography side of things, and looking for one good all-round lens. If you're a photographer, I'd look into the 16 to 55. It is tack sharp, it is incredible. That is the way you want to go. If you're a Fujifilm fanboy, stick with the 16 to 80. It's just the way it is. For me, I would still choose this lens. I have got both lenses. I am still fully deciding on it, but at the moment, I cannot get this out of my camera bag because it is good at absolutely everything. That's why I want to ask you guys. Would you take the reduction image quality, the pick up the F2.8 with the in-body image stabilizer, all that sort of stuff to get it all in one lens? because for me, I bloody would, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Are you interested in this lens? What interests you about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you do own this lens already and have used it quite a bit, let me know in the comments any positives, negatives that I haven't pulled up, because I'm always interested to learn more about the photography gear. As I said, it's only been four to six weeks, but I can highly, 
highly recommend this lens. It is absolutely incredible. This lens for me is three in one. 1200 bucks for three lenses. You bloody beauty. Guys, get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring, drop below and subscribe because we've got Iceland, Slovenia, Italy, and the beautiful Thailand to come. There is so much epic content, and I'll see you guys then. Ciao!